Today we are going to talk about side decking in GOAT format. I'm going to teach by example with this warrior deck list, but don't close the video just yet just because you don't play warriors. All of the side decking concepts that are in this video are widely applicable to all of your standard GOAT format decks, including Chaos and GOAT Control. Welcome to Goat Duels, I'm ACP, and I want to get started by briefly discussing the old way of side decking versus the new way of side decking that all of the best Goat format players are using today. And this philosophical shift is why, if you look at old Goat format deck lists, whether it be from 2005 or 2017, the side decks look very different from today. Now, the old way of side decking is what I would call the risk-averse philosophy. And if a new player to Yu-Gi-Oh! is asking you, hey, what is the side deck? Why do we have it? What's the purpose? How do I use it? Etc. You would probably instinctively say to them, oh, the reason that we side deck is to cover for our main deck's weaknesses. So the idea being that maybe you have a deck that doesn't do well against burn in game one, so you side a lot of cards for burn in games two and three, hope to swing that matchup in your favor, or maybe at least get it to even. The same applied to combo decks, maybe it could be aggro decks. You had a lot of people that, whether it be in 2005 or in the GOAT format revival era where we had a lot of GOAT controlled mirrors, you had people with this view that, hey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to outplay people in the control mirror, and then I'm going to side for everything else. Whether it be empty jar, aggro, whatever it is, I don't necessarily care how popular that deck is. I'm just going to try to get every matchup in my favor post-board and beat everything. And uh, as people got better at GOAT format, we kind of realized that that just wasn't very realistic, this idea that you're going to beat everything. Every deck has its own strengths and weaknesses, and that's kind of the nice thing about the format. It's very diverse. You're not going to be able to beat everything. So the new way of side decking came to be what I call the expected value philosophy. And the shift was that instead of the side deck being a tool to cover for your main deck's weaknesses, it was instead almost an extension of the main deck that you would use to try to get the best overall matchup versus the meta. So rather than saying to yourself, well, I think Empty Jar is a bad matchup, I'm going to side for that, the new way of thinking would be, well, Empty Jar is only 1% of the meta, I don't want to waste that side deck space siding for empty jar when i could be siding for chaos which is like half the meta so you know the slots that used to be things like curse seal the forbidden spell and spell canceler instead became things like mind control that were very strong against the the top deck which today is chaos but in the future could be something different. So that's the philosophy that I'm going to be using today as we build this side deck. We are going to try to give ourselves the best overall matchup versus the meta as a whole. We're not necessarily going to side for every deck, but we are going to have a game plan against all of GOAT format's most popular decks. Now the first two cards that we are going to add to our side deck here are Cliff the Trap Remover and Zombrea the Dark. And we are adding these to our side deck simply because they are searchable. And this, of course, is a pretty helpful tip if you're playing Warriors, seeing as all Warrior decks have two reinforcements of the army. But this also applies to other decks that have ways to search their deck. It might be Mystic Tomato, Shining Angel, Giant Rat, even Sangin to an extent. Having something that is searchable means that you're going to see it more often, which in turn means it's higher expected value. So yes, we're only citing one Zombre of the Dark, but we have two reinforcements of the army. So what we have is this card is taking up one slot in our side deck, but in reality, once it's in our main deck, we'll be seeing it up to three times as much as something else is a one of. So in other words, we are going to see Zombre of the Dark post side. We're going to see it three times as much as something like Heavy Storm, for example, because this Heavy Storm isn't searchable and Zombre is. So these cards are going to have very high expected value, not only because of the impact that they have in the matchup that they're cited for, but also the fact that there's a very low opportunity cost to putting these in our side. So instead of citing Zombrea, we could put something like three Berserkerilla in our side, but we would see that three Berserkerilla, the same 
frequency as one Zumbrea, but it would take up three times as many side deck slots. So hopefully that makes sense. And the same logic applies to Cliff the Chop Remover. Yes, it's really only good versus burns. You might think, oh, well, according to the new philosophy, that means maybe we shouldn't cite it because burn isn't that common. And it's also good versus things like maybe Library of TK. But again, that's also not very common. Uh, to some extent, it's good against even something like Rescue Cat. You know, if they play Gravity Binded Level Limit, it kind of depends on their list. So overall, this is a very narrow card. But because it only takes one slot in our side deck and it's searchable by Reinforce of the Army, that makes it worth citing. So yeah, maybe it only comes in 10% of the time, but we get to see it three times as much. So really citing this cliff for, say, 10% of the overall meta would have the same amount of value as citing something that's not searchable but comes in against 30% of the meta. But that's why we love searchable cards, and that is why you see quite a lot of Goat Format decks citing cards that are searchable. Now next you'll see I've added seven more cards to our side deck, and I will discuss why that is. So after I add the searchable cards to my side deck, that's sort of, you know, the obvious stuff. The second most obvious thing to add to our side deck actually has nothing to do with our side deck. It has to do with what we're taking out of our main deck. So if there's a matchup in the meta where I notice that, hey, I will have to take out a lot of cards from my main deck because they're dead, then I will typically focus on that matchup first as I'm building my side deck. And for most decks in GOAT format right now, that matchup is Warriors. So two crossouts you're going to take out versus Warriors. Two dust shoots you're going to take out versus Warriors. Well, you know, crossout because they set no monsters, dust shoot because they set their whole hand. And then here we're playing two Mystic Swordsmen, so we also want to take those out. So because we have this matchup where we have six cards in our main that are almost dead, I mean, Dust Shoot isn't entirely dead, but it's dead a lot of the time, we want to make sure that we have enough cards in our side deck that we can put in for those. Because think about it this way, what a lot of people do when they're side decking is they go, you know, I have this card that's kind of average in my main deck, maybe it's a 5 out of 10, and I'm going to side out this 5 out of 10 for a card that's maybe an 8 out of 10 in that matchup. And they go, you know, I've gone from a 5 to an 8, so I've improved by 3. But what's even better is, say you have a card that's a 1 out of 10, right? Well, if you side out that 1 out of 10 for even something pretty mediocre, like a 6 out of 10, well, then that's a 1 to a 6. That's that's an improvement of, of 5. You know, you can kind of sort of a mental heuristic that you can use. So that is why in Go Format right now you see people citing tons of cards for Warriors. Not necessarily because of the fact that Warriors is a really bad matchup or because they think all of their matches are going to be versus Warriors. It's more of the fact that they can get a ton of value out of bringing in something from their side deck, just anything in place of something like Cross Out or Dust Shoot. So that's what we're doing here. We've got eight cards that we're going to side in against Warriors. There's nine cards on our side. We're not going to side in Cliff. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. But we are going to side the Zombrea, the Mobius, the Spies, the Sangin, Brain, Bottomless, Zing, Zen, Hu. Now, am I saying that you have to side these exact cards for the Warrior Mirror? No, I don't. Most of these are standard-ish. Probably the one standout is Bottomless. I like it right now because a lot of people are siding Mobius versus Warriors. So we can use that to get people in the Warrior Mirror, which is nice. And you have decks like uh, Monarchs to some extent, various other things, maybe even Goat Control might side in Mobius versus you. Even something like Zombies, you can use Bottomless to hit Ryokoki and then they can't Book of Life it. And also in the Warrior Mirror, even if we Bottomless something like Blade Knight, well then they can't bring it back with pre Call, which is nice. So our plan, our eight card plan for the Warrior Mirror is we're gonna bring in, well, these eight cards. And then we're going to side out two Mystic Swordsmans, two Crossouts, two Dust Shoots, and then also two Kaikus. Because in the Warrior Mirror, it's basically just a vanilla. Yes, you can banish something to stop pre-call BLS, but it doesn't come up too much. Oftentimes your Kaiku just gets run over by Blade Knight or gets run over by Zumbrea. Not too great. We are leaving in the Ninja Grandmaster to kill spies post-board. That's definitely something that can come up. And um, I have talked about saying it on this channel in the past, why I like citing it in Warriors. 
I won't go on a big rant about it, but basically I like it in the Warrior Mirror because people like to side in cards like more Sakuretsu armors and widespread ruins. And when you just go back and forth, sort of Sakuretsu armoring each other's things, having Sangen to push for damage while not being able to get sakuretsu profitably is very nice. It can put a lot of pressure on your opponent, put them in an awkward spot, and it's also a good tribute for Mobius. Note that we don't have a lot of Sangen targets in the main, and we're siding two of them out, right? We're siding out the two Mystic Swordsmen's in the warrior mirror but we're putting in two spies so even though we're only citing in two spies the sagan is often going to search the spy so we do have a lot of spy access here and although these cards are in the side deck primarily for warriors particularly the spies there is a lot of coverage in other matchups as well i like the sagan in the goat control matchup for kind of the same reason that i like it in warriors they can't take it with thousand eyes profitably they can't sakuretsu it profitably zing zen who can come in versus burn uh, the Spies in the Bottomless come in versus other aggro decks. Mobius, of course, comes in versus Burn, comes in versus Rescue Cat and that sort of thing. So that's why we have this. Every time I'm building my side, whether it's this or another deck, I usually put in the searchable things first. Then I just build the, the side for Warriors because I know I'm going to have to take out a lot of cards versus that matchup. And here, that leaves us with six cards remaining to cover the other matchups. Next, we've added two mind controls to our side deck, and the logic for doing that is pretty simple. It is a very impactful card in the most popular matchup in the format, that matchup, of course, being Standard Chaos. Now, I think depending on how the meta develops, we might see some of those decks maybe tune their monster lineup to not be as vulnerable to mind control, but I am building this for the meta as it stands in summer 2023. And as of right now, mind control is very strong versus your average chaos deck. And one option could even be main decking mind control. I have seen some warrior decks main deck one, two, even three mind control. I certainly wouldn't fault you for doing that depending on what sort of meta you expect for the environment that you're taking this deck into. But for this example, we didn't main mind control and we're building our side. So mind control, has got to be there. Now, unlike Warriors, we don't have a lot of cards in our main deck where we're thinking to ourselves, man, this card is really bad versus Chaos. I've got to side this out and put something else in. In fact, the main deck is pretty much built such that every card is good versus Chaos. Now, if you're maining something like Book of Moon, yes, maybe you could say to yourself, well, I better side that out. But with this main deck here, everything is pretty decent against Chaos. And what you side out for that mind control is going to depend a lot on what you think they're siding it against you and what you see in game one. So if you see that they are on the trap lineup that is a lot of chainables like Jari Greed and Regeki Break, no Solemn Judgments, maybe you take out some of your spell or trap removal. That could be Dust Tornado, could be Heavy Storm. If you think that they're not going to be very aggressive, you could take out Torrential or Sakuretsu Armor. The risk of doing that, of course, is that they could side in Berserk Gorillas, they could side in Zombrea of the Darks, and then you kind of get run over because now you have no defense. So that is something to consider. I would just sort of play it by ear, see what you see in those matchups, and side deck accordingly. But that mind control, it's in our side, going along with that expected value philosophy, in that it's going to come in a lot, it's going to get a lot of value, so it's something that we want to have in our side deck even though it's for a matchup that is arguably already pretty favorable. And last but not least, we've got four cards in our side deck for the GOATS meta matchups. That is Bookaboon and King Tiger Wangu. And these cards are in our side not because this is a bad matchup for us, although it is, but they're in our side because that combo is pretty popular in GOAT format. It is called GOAT format for a reason, guys. And lately... As Book of Moon has been disappearing from main decks, I think we've even seen a slight uptick in those GOATS meta strategies. So, we do want to be prepared in the side deck, if not the main deck. Book of Moon could also go in the main deck, we've seen that too. Goes well with Mystic Swordsman level 2. But again, for this example, doesn't happen to be in our main deck, so we are going to side these. Now, if you want a monster that is good versus the GOATS meta decks, another option is Azura Priest. That is something you can side as well. And Azura Priest has the advantage of being a light monster. However, the total lockdown that King Tiger Wagu offers, I think, is stronger than Azura Priest overall. Although, that is subject to debate. If you prefer Azura, you could make one or both of these Azura. 
But I particularly like how against decks like Reasoning Gate, King Tiger Wagu totally shuts down the scapegoat, then they can't tribute the scapegoat for Monster Gate. Whereas with Azura, they could still end phase goats and then activate a bunch of Monster Gates. So that is something to consider. Primarily here for goat control, but again, we like to have some accidental coverage for these less popular matchups, right? We're not going out of our way to side against something like Reasoning Gate, but if we happen to have a card on our side that is good against good control, but also very strong against Reasoning Gate, that is an added bonus. So one thing to consider is that a lot of the decks that play Goat's meta right now are also playing Royal Decree. Now, if you want something that is really good against Thousand Eyes Restrict, Compulse could be a strong option. Could also save something like King Tiger Wagyu from a Sakuretsu armor. However, Compulse has that disadvantage that it's a trap. So as we're building the side, we're considering the trends of the meta. And because of that trend of most of the GOATS meta decks, including Decree, if not in the main, at least in the side, we want to be bringing in Bookaboon. So when we bring in this Bookaboon, we want to be citing out two traps because, you know, we'd much rather have 12 traps instead of 14 versus those Royal Decrees. So it could be a Dust, could be a Saku, could be a Torrential, could be Dust Shoot, could be Call. Kind of depends on the list as well as who's going first. Um, particularly if we're going second, I don't like Dust Shoot so much against the Decree decks, but if we're going first, I actually like Dust Shoot quite a bit against the Decree decks. So you could kind of change that up depending on all of the variables. And that Sega that we included there for Warriors, it's also coming in for Go Control, as we discussed. Kaiku, not very strong against Goat Control. If we take out all those Kaikus, of course, you know, we might be a little low on darks. We got the Breaker, the Dawn, the Sagan as the third dark. So we're going to be siding in three monsters, one Sagan, two Wagus. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take out two Kaikus. Not very strong versus Goat Control, just kind of gets run over by Tsukiyomi. We are going to leave it one just because we want to have a dark. And then for the third monster that we're taking out, we're going to take out the Ninja Grandmaster. Just because, again, like Kaiku, dies to Tsukiyomi, does, and its ability doesn't really do a whole lot, right? Now, if the Goat Control list, if you see that they're main decking Spy, then I think you leave the Ninja in. But most Goat Control lists are not maining Spy. Most Chaos Control lists are not maining Spy. Nor do they usually cite it. So I would be totally comfortable taking that out. That covers all the matchups, and I think we have a pretty solid side here to go with the main. And the goal, remember guys, the goal is to build a combined side and main deck that is on average going to have the strongest matchup versus the meta. Is this deck going to have weaknesses? Sure, of course it is. Are you going to win every single match? No, we're not. But I think this side with the main gives us a pretty good list overall versus the current meta. So let me know what you thought. Not necessarily about each individual card choice, because I know you guys are going to disagree with that. But let me know, are, are you implementing this sort of philosophy, trying to maximize the value of cards versus the most popular matchups? Because right now, that is what I see all the best GOAT format players doing. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. And if you want to find out more about GOAT format's meta, then you should go watch this video here.